In this video I will be going over the upgrade procedure for the DJI Phantom 2 Vision Wi-Fi repeater. Uh, so here's your Wi-Fi repeater and uh, this is the part you will need which is a mini a, a UFL mini PCI to RPSMA pigtail antenna. Zoom in a little bit. And here's... So this is the uh, SMA, the mini PCI, and this is the RP SMA. I will be using... So you can use antennas like this with it. I'll be using... Uh, this mainly, although I also got a couple of omnidirectional antennas, and so as you see, it screws right in. Uh, so you got to take this apart. Uh, using a 1.5 millimeter uh, torque wrench or hex wrench. I forget what this is called, torque or hex. This is a 1.5 millimeter. Sorry about the blurriness there. Um, so, uh, going to take these apart. It's just four screws and then once it's uh, then there's a little clamp on the side so you can have to pry it apart and then you're just going to pull off one of the um, two antenna leads that are connected uh, and plug this in instead and you could just have create a notch on the side or you can put a hole through it and have it mounted like on front over here for example. So I'm going to use a drill and cut a hole through it. And uh, let me uh, unscrew this and show you what's on the inside. So here you have the inside of the unit. Here's the battery. And these are where the two antenna leads go to. Um, you can use either antenna, um, it doesn't matter, although some say that it works a little bit better on this one, but it really shouldn't make a difference. Um, for the optimal improvement, you'd want to use two antennas, but uh, one antenna should be fine. It's going to pop it out, and uh, I will put a hole over here for this to come out there. So it'll be screwed in here. And uh, getting the cover off is a little bit of a trick as you can pull either side here but um, there's actually clips in the middle here and here so what you need to do is uh, carefully pry it up so that way you can lift off of the clip that's holding it in because the clip holds into this piece here and on the bottom. So you need to lift it up enough so that way this clip goes over it so it can release the back cover. And um, you could remove this whole PC board if you're concerned about possibly damaging the board while you're drilling. If you did want to go the drilling route, just take these four screws out. One, two, three, four, and this will lift out revealing the inter internal antennas in there. Um, but that's pretty much it. Or if you don't want to do the whole route, you could just make a little notch on the side and have the wire dangling out. Although be careful about putting tension by accident because you might damage the board if it gets pulled against. But um, yeah, I'm just going to pop this out. It should pop, pop right out.
Yep. There we go. And then I just connect my connect my own wire. I'll be back after I've put the hole in and have it all ready. All right, so let me show you where I am with this. I used my Dremel with this cutting blade. Started from the inside at a low RPM so I could keep it stable and it won't go out of control. Of course, I wore some goggles just in case. I put tape over the inside so it wouldn't spray all over the place. I put some painter's tape on it and this is my result. I have a hole and uh, here's the connector goes right through. As you see, I'm hoping that I have enough, I'm hoping that I did this low enough so that way the screw end here doesn't get in the way of the, um, the cap here. If I didn't do it low enough, I might need to adjust the hole down a bit more, but it uh, came out uh, pretty good. It took a little while to do it because I did it very slowly. I could have gotten to the size a little quicker if I did an outline first using a marker, but I decided I didn't feel like doing that. I just did it slowly. So now what I'm going to do here is uh, unscrew this. going to be enough clearance. Yeah, I think there's enough clearance here. And so there's a bit of slack of the wire. I'm going to probably want to wrap it around the inside. It's over here. But you see I have here, I'm going to put this little washer on the outside and then the nut. Tighten it all up. So I'll get back to you when I'm done with that. Alright, here it is. I might need to widen the hole a little bit and move this a tiny bit down because I'm not quite sure if there's enough room for this little gap here but I will see if it won't fit properly I might smooth this down a wee bit widen the hole down a little bit that way so it can just move down just enough for it to get a proper fit but I will see anyway plug this in here carefully there's like that and we'll see how everything works so here you go boys and girls, the finished product, it's all together. I didn't need to adjust the hole, it fit perfectly. But now I have a 5 decibel gain omnidirectional antenna plugged in. So actually what would be happening is instead of two of the antennas in here working, just one of them would be working in addition to this. So, so in theory this would actually, even this would be a substantial boost in range to the standard setup, which I'm going to test now. I mean, let alone the directional um, nine decibel gain antenna that you have here, which I'll probably secure with a couple of uh, cable ties because there are two screws on the bottom. I figure I'll put the two screws, put a couple of table cable ties looped, and then a cable a cord around it just to kind of hold it like that on top so that way I can interchange antennas if I want to go big one or small one that way I don't have anything permanent um, on here and as you see with the app it's connected to my phantom and uh, so see. 
so you have it. So that works. Let me uh, power this off and unscrew this. Now I may also upgrade my transmitter antenna as well using the same piece because I have two of these and it uses the same type of connector. So the seam is perfect. So there you go, and I can put an external antenna to augment the built-in. So please like and subscribe. Actually, I thought I'd show you how this looks all together. Here's my remote and my range extender and my 5 dBi. You can also get a 9 decibel gain. It's going to be quite a bit longer. It's going to be several inches longer. But um, I may also consider using this for the transmitter antenna or getting an extra one of these to use as the transmitter. Here's my extra one of these puppies and uh, there you go since uh, an omnidirectional it's weakest at the tip you get the longest range extended out that way which is why when you use the transmitter you want to have this antenna pointed upwards like that for the best range unless the phantom is directly above you in which case you want to put it sideways but um, with this you will using an Omni in here, and it's still going to be using one of the antennas in here that you still have connected. Um, you're still going to want to point this at the Phantom, but now you have the benefit of having the omnidirectional radiating straight out in all directions, front and back. It's just not going to work as well to the side of you with it in this orientation, in which case you just want to move it that way if you want to have the best of both worlds, if, you have, if it's flying sideways. But, uh, oh, there you go. So I'm going to Probably be flying with a combination of this one sometimes and my TP-Link directional antenna. The other times I'll probably have this mounted like that, like I said. I'll try and do that. So, uh, and if you're wondering about where I did these labels. This is from my brother P-Touch, label maker. And, uh, so I have NASA mode, and these are all the modes I have unlocked with NASA. And I just use a Sharpie to highlight these. Alright, anyway, that's it. Please like and subscribe. Tomorrow I'm going to be flying and doing some range tests to see how this augments the standard antenna. Thank you for watching.